Hi, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. It's really groundbreaking that Microsoft is enabling Python inside Excel spreadsheets. Excel has been around so long and has been updated with so many features like Power Pivot and Power Query, you might wonder what else can they possibly do to it? So this is one of the most major updates they've ever done, at least in a long time. Just be aware that at the time of this recording in late summer 2023, the feature is still in beta in the Windows edition and hasn't been officially released yet. So you might not have it on your computer yet, and there could be some changes by the time it is official. And as far as I know, it isn't in beta yet in the Mac edition. So let's take a look, see how it works. First, I'll show you quickly, there are three ways to activate Python in a cell. One way is to use the icon in the formulas tab on the ribbon bar. Second way is to type equals py in a cell. And note, this is not a function. And you see there are no parentheses, and you don't put parentheses in there. And the third way is you can press control alt shift p Any one of these three methods will give you a Python prompt in the cell. There is a library of Python function called pandas. Yes, like panda bears. And if you've done programming in Python, there's a good chance you've encountered it. If you want to find out more about pandas, you can go to its official website at pandas.pydata.org. This library is built into Excel when you have Python enabled. We have this table in Excel that's a list of orders. On the ribbons table design tab, let me click in the table and we go to the table design tab here. You can see over on the left, I called it sales table. So I can use this like any table in Excel. The first thing I'm going to do is assign a friendly Python name to this table, to this data set. Then I can work with it using that name. I'll just call it my data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to column J. Notice I'm deliberately keeping column I empty. And I'm going to go to the formulas tab. There's that right in the middle of the ribbon bar is insert Python. So I'm going to click that. And you see it puts the cell into Python mode, and you can see in the formula bar that turns into Python. So let me type the code. So I'm saying my data equals Excel. Excel is a function in Python, and I'm referencing that table that I showed you is called sales table, and that pound all means pretty much obviously, I think, that we're grabbing all of the columns, all of the fields, and that we're saying, yes, this table has headers. Now, something important here is when I'm done writing the formula, I have to press Control Enter to enter it. I can't just press the Enter key by itself. Pressing only the Enter key is how you add another line of Python code up there. So I'm going to hold the Control key and press Enter. And that gives us that data frame. Also, you notice that unlike Excel formulas, Python does not begin with an equal sign. Because this is programming, really, it's not Excel, right? So there's no equal sign there at the beginning. So now I have this data frame, and I can work with it. I can reference it. So I'm going to do a couple of simple functions. I'm going to do uh, the sum and the mean. What Excel calls the average function, Python calls the mean function basic statistics. So this time I'm going to type equals py. And notice when I do that, because I have it installed, it says yes, it creates a Python formula. And I could just hit the tab key and now we are in Python mode again, just the same way as when I clicked the icon. So I'm going to say my data and referencing the dollar sale field, the dollar sale column, we want to get the sum. We we're going to use the sum method. And by the way, you notice that Python accepts the dollar sign and the space because they're in quotation marks. So I'll press Control Enter. OK, great. It gives us the total. Now, there's a caution here uh, that I want to warn you about. I'm going to click in the table. Let's go all the way down to the bottom. You notice there's no total row. Something that you can do in Excel if, let's say, you go to the Table Design tab, 
is you can turn on the total row. Now I'm looking at the bottom here and that's okay. Yeah, there's that same number 13948. Here's a little problem with using that total row though is when I go up to the top, you see that number there in Python is doubled because Python is looking at all of the rows in the cell, including that total row. So I'm going to turn that back off and notice it goes back to the correct number. Okay, so that was the sum function. I also mentioned the mean function. So I'm just going to edit that. I'm going to turn sum into mean, control enter. And there we have the mean, we have the average. You're probably also familiar with Excel's if function. And here's how we could do it with Python. I'm going to go a little over to the right. Actually, let me make column J just a little wider here so we have some space to work. Now, when you look down the dollar sale column, you notice that some of the sales are over 100 and some are under. I want to put a comment down a column that displays the word high if the sale is 100 or greater and low if the sale is under 100. With regular Excel formulas, that's what the if function would do. In the Python world, there is another package of functions called numpy. Silly sounding name, but it stands for numerical Python or something like that. You can find info on it at www.numpy.com. As of this recording, Excel has five libraries built in. There's pandas, which we talked about, numpy, which we talked about. There's also a matplotlib, math plotter, seaborn, and stats models. You can import, so these all five come with Excel, but you can import other libraries too. For example, there's a library called DateTime that, as the name sounds, has a lot of date and time functions. To import a library, simply go into Python mode and use the import function. So you would say import date time. So let's say down column K, I'm going to use the where function from numpy. This formula looks and works a lot like the if function in Excel. So NP, we're using the numpy library, and in that numpy library is that function called where. So we are saying where the data set called my data in the dollar sale column has a value that's less than 100, insert the word low, otherwise insert the word high, and control enter. Now, if I just left this in Python mode, it wouldn't show anything useful. It just shows this ND array. But we can switch back and forth between Python mode and Excel mode. So you see over on the left, to the left of the formula bar, is this little Python icon and a down arrow. So I'm going to click that, and you see this is how we can switch back and forth. So I'm going to choose Excel value, and now this shows a useful result. Well, it would show a more useful result if I started that in the correct row, and we could just look across anywhere there is a value over 100, it's high. Anywhere there is a value under 100, it says low. Now, another word of caution here. In the current edition, if you go up to this little arrow there and you switch back and forth between Python and Excel mode a bunch of times, the sheet might start throwing errors. If that happens, save and close the file, then reopen it. That seems to fix the error. Now, you might also be familiar with Excel's automatic subtotal feature. I covered it in a previous episode. With Python, we could do it with a formula. So what I want to do in this case is get subtotals by state. There is a built-in pandas function called group by. It's one word you'll see in a moment. The syntax is tricky. What I want to do is group by state, and that field will go in parenthesis, but we're summing the dollar sale column, so that is going to go in square brackets. So let's just do it, and then we'll worry about it. So I'm going to go in here and let's go back to Python there. So I'm referencing that object called my data. I'm using the group by function and I'm saying, okay, we're going to group by state. So there's that column that's called state. This is where things get wacky is we've got state in parenthesis and dollar sale here we're putting that in square brackets. 
and you also notice that there is no dot in between them. And then we are running the sum function, and that does have a set of parentheses. So once again, we are grouping by state, so that has parentheses. We are summing dollar sale, so that has square brackets. Now we're going to control enter. And again, this gives us another Python object, but here's what's really cool is when I click that little icon, see this gives us a preview of what's going on. When I go and switch into Excel mode, now we have it on the sheet, just like we have that low and high column. Also, you could tell by the uh, border here and the border down column K. This is one of them newfangled spill functions that Excel introduced a couple of years ago. If you want to get several points of statistical info at once, you can do it with a single Python function called describe. So I'm going to go a little bit over here to the right. Let's insert another bit of Python. So kind of like before when we were using the sum function and the mean function, this time we're simply using the describe function. So control enter and maybe scroll a little bit here. So there is that series. So this shows us some statistical info. And rather than getting a preview, if I want this on the sheet itself, I'm going to switch here into Excel mode. And it just pops it onto the page. Now let's create a column chart. What Excel calls a column chart, Python calls a bar chart. Also, my Excel table is currently sorted by state, but to create a chart that's less cluttered, I'll create a chart by variety because there's only a handful of varieties here. What's great is I don't have to resort the table. Python will do the sorting internally. But one more thing, before I even create the chart, I need to go and define it. I need to define what my chart is. So I'm going to create this object called my chart. So what I'm saying here is I'm creating this object called my chart, saying, okay, that let's take my data, which we defined up there previously, run the group by function, and then we're going to group by variety. We're going to sum by dollar sale. We kind of talked about this previously, and then run the sum function. Always remember to put in those parentheses. So I'm going to control enter and now it gives me a series. So the series itself shows me this nice little chart. And I could go and put this into Excel mode and have this on the sheet, but that's really not what I'm after right now. So what I want to do is this now is going to become this cell that I've clicked. I want that to become the upper left corner of the chart that I'm creating. So one more time, let's go into Python mode. So now that I have up there that object I created called my chart, I'm running the plot function and I'm saying, okay, let's use variety for the x-axis, cell for the y-axis, and we want a bar chart, control enter. One other thing, and this can absolutely drive you nuts, is sale. So before I point out, and you can see in, in the some of the formulas I was using, I was using the dollar sign in the sale column, dollar sale. Here, I'm omitting the dollar sign and the space. So just be aware, sometimes these things will happen. Now, this gives us this Python object called image. That's not very useful. So let's go into Excel mode. And you can see there's this tiny itty bitty little chart, kind of like it's an Excel spark line. But what I want to do is let's scroll a little bit. I'm going to make that a little bigger. I'm going to merge it with some nearby cells. So I'm just going to uh, grab some cells like that, go to the Home tab, and the good old-fashioned merge. And now it shows it more clearly. By the way, you notice that I cannot select this chart and go to a chart tab on the ribbon bar. You notice there's no chart tab, you know, even if I click on that. And there's nothing to click on, and that's because it's not an Excel chart. This is a Python object. So if you're a Python programmer, there's all kinds of cool stuff you can do directly inside Excel worksheets. As a final reminder, this is currently in beta, so it might change somewhat by the time you have it available, and it will be available only in the Windows edition, 
at least to start with. So until next time, my name is Bob, and this has been Between the Sheets.